Namaste everyone. Welcome back to Live Stronger. Today we are going to work on our lower body again. I hope from after yesterday's workout your recovery is good. If you feel any kind of tightness or any soreness which is uh, uncomfortable or creating uh, you know hindrance in your daily lifestyle, make sure you use a foam roller or a massage gun to massage yourself and relieve some tension. Otherwise, with good sleep and uh, good nutrition, your recovery should be always on time. On that note, let's begin with today's uh, workout. We'll be starting off with dynamic stretching, a warm up, and our working sets. So let's begin. For our first dynamic stretch, we are going to use our uh, sorry. We are going to do the hip opener. So today I'm, I have grabbed a kettlebell uh, in my gym. I happen to have a six kilo kettlebell, but if you don't have one, you can also use a dumbbell. It's absolutely fine. You just hold the dumbbell. So six kilos is fine for me. You can start with five kilo dumbbell. That's absolutely fine. So we have done this previously. One knee down, one foot open, and we lean towards the foot, which is open. So let's begin. This time we are going to take a weight, hold it to exaggerate the stretch. So one, I'm just going to hold the kettlebell a little bit higher because it's touching the ground as I go down. So one. I feel my inner thigh stretch and inside, hopefully my hips are opening up better. Five repetitions each side. So let's shift to the other one, other side. It's very simple, just one knee down, one foot open. If you're not able to balance while taking these stance, you can use a bench or, or just take a dumbbell which is on the dumbbell and take support of it. So I take my kettlebell, hold it a little bit higher because it's touching the ground as I go down. One. Two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I did six. So that's our first dynamic stretch. Now let's go on to our second dynamic stretch. For second one, I'm just going to put the kettlebell away. We're going to do our greatest stretch, but in a dynamic fashion. So let's begin. One knee down, one, one foot up, one hand down. Push your knee down leg as far behind as possible and slowly squeeze it up. Feel the stretch, go down and twist. Hold for a couple of seconds, that's enough. Then next. The other side. It doesn't take much of your time, just a couple of minutes of dynamic stretching it can help you a lot during your exercises. One more rep each side. That's it. Done with our second dynamic stretch. Now let's go for our third one. For third one, we are going to do the deep squat stretch. If you are unable to do the deep squat switch, uh, stretch, uh, without your heels coming off. So I would recommend use a bench or a box or a step up to first uh, stretch your calves a little bit, just not to hold the position, but just stretch them 
to increase a little bit of mobility in them. So you can do this just simply by stepping up and pushing your knee way forward, then your toes. If you have any restrictions, you should feel it now. And if the restriction is extremely tight, uh, you're better off to do, to massage the area for a minute or two and then try again. You must, you will definitely feel a little bit of improvement. So let's put the bench aside, go for a deep squat. My calves feel fine. Take a stance where you can jump really high. So let's go. A little bit toes facing out so that, you know, a little bit open stance. So your toes are facing outwards. That kind of opens your hips. Squeeze your glutes. Hinge, or, or sorry, lean forward by pushing your glutes behind. Feel your hamstring stretch. And from here, once your hamstrings are completely stretched and you can't lean any more forward, bend your knees to go into a deep squat and hold for five seconds. Now slowly shift weight onto one foot at a time. If you're still unable to do the deep squat due to restriction in your calves, and tightness, keep practicing the uh, pushing your knee forward then your toes and massage it and then move on to your warm up exercise. Eventually you'll get the depth, that's absolutely fine. So we are done, let's go on to our warm up exercises. So for our first warm up exercise, I'm going to do simple squats. Now here, I'm, I've just put on a lightweight uh, resistance band around my knees. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is to show you uh, or to help you understand if you have this particular challenge, which I'm going to tell you now. So if you're, when you're squatting, when you go down and when you're about to come up, if your knees happen to collapse inwards, that's because of weakness in your glute minimus, which is supposed to hold, even the medius, uh, supposed to hold your leg and contract and hold your leg out when you're squatting, when, uh, during the motion, upward motion of your squat. So if this part of your glute is weak or unable to fire, your legs tend to collapse inwards. They are the ones which are pulling out, uh, pulling your knees out and making sure you stand in a straight line. If your knees collapse in, the load shifts onto your lower back. This band helps you give, uh, helps you in giving a feedback that your knees are about to collapse. So you can consciously push your knees out and go through the motion. So I'll show you. So I take a stance. The resistance band is right now a bit under tension. So my knees are out. So I just need to make sure that they don't collapse in. If they collapse in, the resistance band will slip out. So if for example, if I have to do it, how it happens, I go down and as I come up and my knees tend to go so the resistance band becomes extremely loose. I'm, I'm just exaggerating here. <laughs> this wouldn't be the, uh, or I hope this is not the case with you. You might have one leg shifting in or the one leg losing balance. So this band helps you get that feedback that one of your leg is misfiring or both your legs are misfiring at your glutes. So let's begin. Simple warm up. we are going to do squats. Just partial repetitions, 15 to 20 repetitions. If you don't have this, it's absolutely fine. You can do without this, without the resistance band. So let's begin. So I just adjust myself, feel the squat, go up. I like to keep my toes open during squats because for me, I tend to get my, uh, you know, lower back turn inwards a lot if I keep my toes for facing, pointing forward. So I keep them open so that my lower back, the uh, load doesn't shift onto my lower back. My hips remain open.
that's it. So it's very simple, just the usual squats, 15 to 20 reps, feel the uh, tension in your quads, feel the tension in your glutes because you're trying to keep the resistance band up under tension. So they all are working together to make sure you have a straight posture as you come up. Now that we are done with warm up one, let's move on to warm up number two. For my second warm up, I am using a bench to take a support. You can use anything just to hold on to. And again, I'm using a resistance band. This warm up can be done without a resistance band. Just face this side so you can see me better. Right now I have the resistance band just above my ankle joint. So I have one foot stationary and now I use my abductors to move one foot away from the midline of my body. Again, activating my uh, outer thigh and my glutes. So let's begin. Just under tension and small movements. You don't have to do extremely heavy movements. You should instantly start feeling the glutes working really hard, the abductors working really hard to go through the range of motion. Try to keep the foot which is stationary as straight as possible. You might feel a little bit of uh, tension on this foot too because it's trying to stabilize the body from falling off. Five more reps. Just feel, started to feel the tension. And that's it. So you can immediately uh, switch to the next leg or just take five to 10 seconds just to relax the leg which has been trying to abduct. So now again, take a support. It is quite helpful. Without support, you might be uh, losing balance and the exercise loses its effectiveness. So take a support and do it. So let's begin the other foot. I happen to have a little bit more mobility on my right side, I noticed. So these are the things you get to notice while doing unilateral warm-ups. Now this leg is getting a bit tight very quickly because I've just worked on this leg, the abductors. Now they're working really hard to stabilize my body while the other leg is kicking off. Let's try to get a few more reps. Oof, that felt tough. It's pretty hot now. I'm sweating easily, but that's fine. So we are done with our warm ups. Let's move on to our working exercises. Even in our working exercises, I might do the first set as a warm up set just to make sure my joints and my lower body is completely ready to get to the working sets. So for our first exercise, we are going to do squats, bubble squats. So if you do have a bubble, a bubble squat rack, you can use that to start this exercise. I don't have, so I'm going to use it off the ground. So it's pretty simple. You take a bubble. I like to keep the bubble high on my traps, feel more of my quads. If I keep it low, if, if you keep it low about here, you feel it on your glutes. But to start off with, I like to start off with keeping them high on my traps. Get into a stance where you can pro, uh, produce the maximum amount of jumping force. Open your toes so that your hips remain open. Before squatting, every time, take a deep breath and then squat. This makes sure that your entire core is full of air and your spine remains straight. So let's begin. Deep breath and squat. If you can squat deep, go ahead and squat deep. So I'll show you if I have to squat deep. At your deepest or at the lowest point, hold for a couple of seconds to feel the blood rushing. And from there, try to get up in one go. And here, if you notice that your knees are still collapsing, use the lightest resistance band to give you that feedback. 
and that will help you understand which side is not firing properly. So you can warm up and you can, you know, work on that side a little bit more. So let's go, let's do the, without wasting much time. Let's begin, 10 to 15 reps. I'm doing partial repetitions because there's not much of a weight here. I want constant tension on my quads. I'm breathing normally. That felt good. So I'm going to take just a few seconds and start my second set. So for my second set, I have loaded the bar with some weight, nothing great. I, am, I can, uh, I'm capable of uh, squatting more than my body weight on the bar, but since I don't have a rack, I'm going a bit easy on the weights and try to get more tension through partial repetitions. If you have a rack, use that for getting of uh, getting the weight of the rack easily, but here I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to lift it off the ground like I do on deadlifts. So up. So if you're not comfortable lifting off the floor, heavy weights, don't do it. Continue with the weights which you can lift off the floor. So let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, that was good. Now I have to take the weight off. That's absolutely not a safe way to take it off. But I don't have much of an option. So now I take a break and go for my third set. Let's go for our second set. I've taken a good uh, 90 seconds break. Take my stance of squat. A little bit wide open to spacing outwards. Go for my deadlift lift stance. Because I'm lifting the weight off the ground. If you are not doing that, you're taking it off the rack, you can save time here. You don't have to go to all this work. Quite a bit of work in terms of getting the weight onto your back. Recorrect my stance. I look forward, lean back. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, I have to take the weight off. I'm going to finish it there. Slow and steady. That was good, felt good. <sighs> Let's take a break, go for our next exercise. For my next exercise, I'm going to do standing single leg calf raises. Now, if you have a standing calf raise machine in your gym, use that. If you're not, 
or if you like the connection which a seated calf race machine gives you, you are free to do that. If you like the donkey calf races, do that. Basically, we have to get one variation and I haven't done this in a long time, so I'm going to do it. To start off that, uh, I'm using a bench to support myself or balance myself when I'm doing it one leg at a time. You can load this exercise if you feel even doing one leg at a time is very easy by just holding a plate in one arm or a dumbbell in one arm to increase the weight or use a weighted vest, use a weighted belt, multiple options to overload yourself with weight. So let's begin. So I'm going to do my right leg first. Just the position is simple, heels down, toes on the height, on the step up. You can use, if you don't have the step up box, you can use a couple of plates to get you that height. And you begin from here. Simply raise up, go down. Now, the entire weight of my body is being pushed by my calf. Just quite some weight. So I can load it by just holding a dumbbell in one arm or a plate in one arm. Oh, that's already tired. So I'm going to shift my leg. You don't have to take a break. So as we are doing one leg at a time, in same position. We want an explosive push up and slow stretch down. You can, I'm doing it barefoot, but you can wear shoes of your comfort. If you're not comfortable doing it barefoot. With barefoot, it might be a little bit uncomfortable initially because the surface is a bit rough. Got a couple more reps. My legs was just slipping a bit. Now, if the movement is not much and you feel extremely restricted doing, today is pretty hot, I'm sweating a lot. Uh, if you feel the single legs are not effective, you can also do both the legs at a time. So I'll be doing that now because I felt uh, one leg at a time, I'm not getting the stretch which I want. So I'm going to do both the legs at a time. Again, use the support. There's nothing wrong in using a support. The weight is still on your calves. Push. Yeah, far more better contraction. Explosive push up and slow down, stretch. Last couple more reps. Oh, that was very tight. So that's one set. Let's take a short break. Go for our second set. So let's go. Let's go for my second set. Our second set. Just move the camera a little bit closer so you see how my leg moves in the, uh, to the mo range of motion. So I'm standing comfortably, heels falling down, toes on the height, and then push up. I try to be explosive, generating the power, and go down slowly. It almost feels like I'm trying to jump off the box on my toes. Few more reps, I feel my right calf getting really tight. I'm done. And that's it for our, <laughs> my knees. They always keep cracking, I don't know why. But that's it for our second exercise. Now we move on to our third exercise. So for my third exercise, I'm going to do seated hamstring curls. If you don't have seated, if you have lying hamstring curl machine at your disposal, you can use that too. If I'm going to do unilateral training, so see if it is possible for you to do unilateral also, one leg at a time. If not, do 
both the le uh, legs at a time. So let's begin without any delay, not heavy weight because I know one leg at a time is challenging. So lock my leg in place, seated comfortably, one leg out of the way, one leg going to push down. So I'm going to hold it wherever you are comfortable, hope you can see and then squeeze your hamstrings, imagine squeezing them like you contract your bicep. Let's try to get a few more reps, it's quite challenging. When you do one leg at a time, a lot of muscles which have to work to make sure the energy is produced right, absolutely right, because when you're using both le two legs, the multiple muscles trying to wait, move a single weight. So let's go for the other leg. You don't have to take a break because that leg was resting all this while. Feel a little bit stronger on my left side. Let's see how far it lasts. My hamstrings working really hard to get the weight down. Just a couple more reps. Ouch. That was good. Felt good. So we take a short break. You have to, uh, the break in between these sets can be very short because you're doing one leg at a time. So when one leg is working, the other leg is already at rest. Hmm. 30 seconds should be fine. Done with my break. Let's start. Lock my leg. I've increased the weight a little bit, slightly. So let's see how it goes. Let's begin. Oops, challenging, but it's okay. Let's go. Let's keep pushing. Few more reps. Yep. Felt a really good contraction. Now let's shift our leg. Get my left leg up. Let's go. very difficult to cheat when you're doing one leg at a time because the weight won't move so easily. So again, done with my second set. Take a short break and go for our third set. Let's go for our third set. One leg at a time, hamstring curls. So this time, a little bit more weight increase. So let's see how it goes. Position myself for me to be able to push properly, curl properly. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ooh. I didn't count one rep because I was not able to finish the range of motion. I managed to get good eight to nine reps. So shift my leg, get comfortable and curl. Left leg is a bit stronger when it comes to curling. Don't know why. Nope, it's not, it's not struggling. Uh, let's keep pushing. Okay. Uh, the last rep was extremely challenging. If you feel uh, a bit of, uh, I mean, the contractions happening just nearby glutes, 
or just by your mid glutes, right, right here. That's absolutely fine. Your hamstrings are connected to your glutes. So when you're trying to curl really hard, and if they're unable to, they'll uh, try to take some help from the glute muscle also, or they pull the glute muscle also. So it's it's all it's okay. It's fine. Nothing is wrong in that. So we are done with our single leg hamstring curls. Let's move on to our next exercise. For my next exercise, I'm going to train my adductors. That's my inner thigh. So if you have an adductor machine at your gym, it's basically a machine where you can squeeze your adductors together. Use that. I don't have, and if you don't have one, you have cable machine. You can also use ankle straps to mount yourself to the cable machine and do the same exercise. Here I'm using a resistance tube because I don't have a cable machine too. So I'm going to stand straight. Now there, at my straight position, there's a lot of tension in the resistance band already. It is pulling me out, it's pulling my leg out. So the bench is for me to take support just in case if I lose balance. So I let my leg go with the tension. Now pull it back to the midline of my body. Simple, not much. My abductors are relaxed. They get contracted, but they are relaxed because the pulling is being done by the resistance tube. I feel my inner thigh, both my inner thigh is working really hard. My right leg is working hard to stabilize my body. My left leg is working to get my left leg in line with the midline of my body. A few more reps. That felt good. Now I can shift the tension onto my other leg. You might also feel tension on the leg which is stationary right on your uh, upper side of your glutes. That's because that area is working really hard to keep your body straight. I'm just going to turn facing, uh, facing the camera backwards with my back. You can see how the other leg works. So one leg straight, the other leg goes tension and pull together. few more reps. And done. So that's one set. We'll do another set of these. Again, you might feel a lot of tension on the stationary leg, on the upper side of the glutes of the stationary leg, because it's trying really hard to stabilize your body, because when the weight is pulling you off, you tend to fall. So this side of your glute is holding you up and straight. The bench is just for support. The work is being done by this particular glute muscle in holding you straight. And then your inner thigh is, tr sorry, trying to get your leg in line with your midline. So we take a short break and go for our second set. Let's go, let's go for our second set for the adductor exercise. Okay, let my leg go out and bring it close. Use the other leg to keep your body in a balance. more reps. Oh. 
the amount of work my stationary leg is doing to keep my body straight is a lot, but it's good work. The muscle is working hard to keep my body straight. Shift. Very easy exercise, but you can increase the resistance as you wish. The resistance feels easy. You can increase it, make the pull difficult. For me, this resistance feels good for 12 to 15 reps. Ooh, that was good. So we are done with this exercise. And that was the last exercise for our low body day for today. Now let's move on to our static stretches. For our first static stretch, I'm going to stretch my, I forgot to take off the straps, but that's absolutely fine. Uh, stretch my quads, remember. Stand straight, take one foot into your hand, Get the foot in line with the foot which is on the ground. Get straight, as straight as possible and start feeling the stretch immediately. So we hold for 10 seconds. Watching the watch, 10 seconds go by. Feel a good stretch now. Make sure you stand as straight as possible. And the leg is in line with the other leg. Creates the best stretch. So that's one side. Now for the other side, I'm just going to turn to have the support, take the leg in line, get straight and feel the stretch and hold for a few seconds. 15 to 20 seconds is a good range of time. Just watching the watch. That's for our quads, for our hamstrings. Simple, keep your foot at a height. Get your uh, leg in a straight line so your hamstring is already at its neutral length. Now any kind of pull you do at any one end creates a stretch. So I'm going to push my glutes behind. So they're going to be hit pulled from behind while my leg remains stationary on the bench. So. That's it. I leaned a little bit forward by pushing my glutes behind. I start feeling the stretch. I want to exaggerate it. Try to bring my toes towards my shin. And that's it. Hold there. Feel a good stretch. For 15 to 20 seconds again. You can always use a bench or a wall for support and keep your focus on the stretch of the muscle. Well, good. Now the other leg, same principle. Get it straight. Feel your quads tight because when your leg is straight, your quads are contracting. Hamstrings are relaxed. And now slowly, I push my glutes behind to start feeling the stretch. Try to get my toes towards my shin to exaggerate the stretch, I see. When you're doing the stretch, your calves are also actually stretching kind of, not much, but they are at a stretch right now. So you can work two muscles at a time. The more you are able to push your glute behind, the more stretch you feel on your hamstrings. So. That's the reason you find many people trying to touch their head down to the leg to that basically pulls the glute away from the hamstring. But it's fine if you are not able to do that. You just have to get enough stretch. That's it. Well, good. Now I can do it one more time. I can do a little bit of more foam rolling. 
to relax my legs. But that's it for today's workout. And that's a wrap. Thank you for joining me. If you like the workout and if you were enjoying the work along, so please do like the video. If you have any feedback regarding any of the exercises which I've done today, or if you want to add, for me to add a new exercise, drop a comment and I will try to work it out and get it involved, uh, sorry, get it incorporated into my routine. But otherwise, if you haven't yet subscribed, please do subscribe. Share this video with your friends and family if you feel it could be helping them also in, getting, in terms of getting stronger. Thank you for joining me and you have a good day.